good afternoon everyone today is the 10th day of uh, lockdown during which we are locked up in our houses doing many things uh, and today we are going to discuss a very familiar topic and uh, i don't know if uh, any one of you uh, has been documenting your lockdown experiences uh either uh, in the social media or you have been writing something i'm not sure anyway uh, we all know that uh, documentation is a very old practice our forefathers have been doing this uh, very meticulously in the form of diaries and the one diary that we know uh, very much uh, is the one written by a young girl called Anne Frank uh, who during the second world war time went into hiding in uh, Netherlands and uh, she was recording all her experiences during that time and that that uh, has become a great document afterwards it has become part of history and it's a best seller as well you all know that and to uh, to be very specific uh, we have been doing this uh, all through our studies in one way or the other in schools uh, we have written project reports when we came to college or university uh, we have been doing uh, dissertation works and as part of that we have we have been documenting uh, our work and also we have been writing journal papers so today uh, for 30 minutes i'll be discussing some of the fundamental uh, aspects of documentation with specific reference to report writing because that is one thing which we all do every now and then in our roles either in our government office or in project or in some other institutions so i have a uh, small presentation here i'll be sharing that with you and uh, if you have any questions um, you can reserve it for the end of the presentation or if you feel like asking in between the presentation please don't hesitate to post your question it will be there i'll be answering that afterwards so once again uh, i welcome you all to this uh, uh, webinar definition of document is uh, it is uh, it is a uh, record of uh, our experiences it is uh, a document for reconstructing something an event or a phenomenon that is the simplest explanation for a document but when we go to the uh, uh, library science uh, terminology we find that documentation document is explained as everything that may be represented as evidence that is the standard explain uh, definition for document and we all know that perfect documents let the readers experience or know about the source of information at is, as it is given and vague documents or improper documents uh improper documents actually doesn't convey any particular uh, thing so you know the importance of uh, writing documents in the correct way now before we go into the details of what uh, report writing is let me now briefly introduce to you the three fundamental aspects of uh, a document now the first and foremost thing is uh, a source of information which we are going to document and at the other end we have a reader waiting to know what this information is so we are actually communicating this source of information to the reader in the form of a document so you know the importance of uh, the communication that we are doing through documentation so we need to be very clear about three things one is 
we should know as to what we are going to communicate secondly uh, we should be very clear as to what the reader is expecting to read or what his interests are and third and lastly we should know how to communicate this in the simplest manner so that the reader gives a proper understanding of the actual information so these are the three important things that we need to know when we go into documentation documentation and preparing documents now if you look at the different categories of documents uh, there are three basic categories of documents the most important one being uh, the academic document which we all uh, use in during our studies uh, they they come in the form of project reports dissertation thesis journal paper i hope you are all familiar with all these things now when it comes to business or official uh, uh, activities we write reports official reports proposals rfp is a short form for request for proposal when we ask someone to submit a proposal we float what what is called an rfp that is a jargon and uh, contracts and financial statements are also other types of business documents and when it comes to media we write scripts and mockups mockups is uh, mockups are nothing but a small uh, simulation or it is a kind of prototype of what we are going to do so these are the three uh, basic types of documents today we will be discussing specifically what project reports are now project reports to be very specific uh, document whatever happens in a project in a project that happens across a large geographic region there there are many point sources of information and uh, people who are uh, dealing with this information may be working at the uh, last line of the field chain and they become very important persons for this documentation so it involves uh, several people and documentation starts right from the field where the actual action happens so to to prepare a very good document it is very important that we document uh, events and activities as and when it happens otherwise we lose crucial information and it is also important to dedicate someone solely for documentation purpose let's say we are having a district where a project is happening and there are many points in the district where uh, actions are happening it's always better that you de dedicate one person for the district for consolidating all information so that becomes very easy that is something about project reports now when it comes to good documents or a rating good documents or rating good reports we say it is benchmarking the document relating the document with something that is considered as a standard now we can uh, see that there are four important criteria for rating documents one is the language uh, because how we say is equally important as what we say that makes all the difference even if we have many things to say if you say it wrongly doesn't convey anything then comes the design how we are organizing the information in a uh, format for this if we use some template some already available template with a very specific structure that would be a very good idea uh, to make sure that we reach the audience in a proper way now comes the relationship criteria uh, this uh, tells us if we are properly uh, relating with the intended audience or if we are catering to the audience in a proper way and last but not the least is the content criteria uh, we we uh, see if the content is organized properly to serve the purpose so these are the four criteria upon which we rate the documents let us now take each one of this when it comes to language as i have already mentioned it is the medium through which we communicate 
we communicate to, uh, with the audience so it has got uh, much importance in in uh, documentation work now we again we find that there are four aspects when it comes to language criteria the first and foremost is uh, the directness of language how direct are we in con conveying the information are we making clear as to what happened when and where in simple way or are we confusing the reader by by uh, making many statements which are irrelevant in a very complex way so that is directness of language now another important thing is to use a vocabulary that is understood by everyone you need to understand that a report or a document is not a place for you to show your language skills it is a place where you need to uh, use a minimum language a language which is understood by all using common words and avoiding jargon and abbreviations as far as possible that is a very important thumb rule when it comes to writing documents and then comes the grammar the fundamental or the basic grammar that we need to follow especially the tense and the pronunciation i'm sorry punctuation that we need to follow now mostly uh, reports speak about events that happened in the past so it is very important that we speak in a past tense not in a present tense for example it is not proper to say in a document or write in a document that the program is being organized in connection with something we see that the program was organized or was held in connection with something that is the proper way and also uh, punctuation especially commas if you don't apply commas in, at the right place it conveys a different meaning so the basic punctuation you need to follow when you write reports and the most important thing which is a combination of everything is the readability readability often we confuse readability with uh, legibility legibility is totally different it is the neatness with, we, with which we present a document whereas readability is the ease of navigation how easily we can read a document how smooth the document is the readability becomes very good if we use short sentences or not too long sentences we have a tendency to connect uh, sentences with and and other uh, connecting uh, words so and it's all, always used better to use simple sentences so if we follow these four uh, aspects your language will be a uh, better one for communicating what you want to communicate now uh, there are certain thumb rules when it comes to using language for writing the posts for instance uh, always use formal language uh, and uh, uh, not using uh, personal statements and filler words we have a tendency for using some words every uh, here and there and that is what we call as a filler word and also we tend to write personal statements for instance uh, when we write about a uh, program which happened there could be many small things in that event which tend to take it in a very personal sense uh, it's not proper to write that the the um, welcome speech was delivered by sri krishnan sir in a very wonderful manner that is a very improper way of reporting so you you don't personal personalize and also don't use colloquial terms and short forms we tend to use social media language at places so we need to be very clear about this and uh, uh, usage verb vague and imprecise words that is also another common uh, issue when we write reports uh where vague words like many various some different these are all vague or imprecise words which we need to avoid when we write reports so we need to be very precise 
uh, as much as possible. For instance, we don't write as that many people attended the program. If possible, it is better to write a total of 250 people, including um, government officials, department heads, and the local rep people's representatives attended the meeting. That is a proper way of writing. Abbreviation should be explained whenever it is used. You can use abbreviations, but it should be explained in the beginning. And uh, I've already said that uh, short forms and short social media language has to be avoided as far as possible. And uh, always use concrete and specific language to give tangible images of what happened. Many a times we tend to uh, beat around the bush to present some something before the audience. So be very specific so that the reader gets an image of what you're going to, what you're talking about. And uh, always use minimal text to con convey information. For instance, uh, it's not proper to write that many competitions were held during the program, such as quiz competition, photographic competition, uh, essay writing competition. Whereas it is proper to write that Q's photography essay uh, competitions were held during the event. That is a very uh, short way of telling as to what happened during the event. And uh, usage of flowery language has to be avoided in any case. And uh, try to use plain text as, as much as uh, possible because it, it cuts all the craps and uh, uh, connects directly with the readers. So that is about uh, uh, the language elements. Now, when, when, you when it comes to the structural layout of reports, reports always have a layout, a standard layout. There can be minor variation depending upon the situation, whether you are reporting for a company, for a government office, uh, for a program, there can be variation. But in general, there are certain eight items which are common to all reports. There has to be a title and a title page in which you write uh, uh, the most uh, important information about uh, what the project is about or what the program is about, who, who is uh, documenting the, this program, all those things. And uh, there has to be a condensed page in which you list what is inside in different sections. And if you, you are using a lot of uh, abbreviations, it's also proper to give after the condensed list a, a list of abbreviations or short forms you have, re, you, you have used. For instance, you are, you are going to use uh, ADB in many places. So you write in that uh, list of abbreviations, ADB means Asian Development Bank. So you explain all the short, short forms that you are using. And then you write an abstract or a gist of what is inside that gives a snatch, snapshot or a bird's eye view of the entire report. And uh, abstract is the, is the first thing that a reader reads. So you have to be very clear when you write the abstract, especially with respect to the language that you use and all the criteria that I mentioned before has to be kept uh, specially in mind when you write abstracts. And in the introduction, you write the background of the project and the major achievements and milestones it has achieved. So this is the introduction. And comes the main body, which could be uh, uh, falling under many headings or chapters. Uh, and this, this is actually the essence of, essence of the report. And then we will have a, a conclusion section where you uh, tell as to what is the finding of the project, what action needs to be followed based on whatever you have presented. And then comes the recommendations part. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is also very important, especially when you, this is a functional report uh, in which you expect something to happen based on this. So be very clear about this part if it is a functional report. And finally comes the appendix whatever you want to give as additional information, you add as, add, add as appendix one, appendix two and all. Formats, the 
uh, detailed documents you can give in the appendix sections so this is the structural layout of reports now the second most important criteria uh, is the design that we are using for a, a report a structured and a well written report is a good document that serves the purpose in a in a in a beautiful manner when it comes to design there are three elements which are very important the first one being legibility how legible or clear or readable uh, are the fonts and how uh, uh, good is the layout so normally uh, we use a, a, a times new roman 12 or 11 font uh, mostly uh, the 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 guidelines we give for report writing mention that we need to follow this particular font to maintain a standard format and uh, the number of words that you use per line it has to be a standard uh, format not not to, we, we should not be using too many words and the line spacing normally we use 1.5 line spacing between words in, a, in the main body and for headings and subheadings we use single spacing and the, what is the spacing to be given between paragraphs between heading and paragraph beginning so these are all very important when it comes to the design of the document now comes the graphic elements we may be using many graphic elements in a uh, report like images uh, charts tables illustrations so how we integrate all these things with the text is very very important in fact there has to be a balance between all these things of special importance is the way we balance between text and image the text image balance could be one in a poster it could be another in a brochure where the visual elements are more important whereas whereas it, when it comes to the uh, report the text has more importance but visual elements supplement the text or it adds value to the text but if, if the visual elements are totally lacking or if you neg if you neglect the visual elements text becomes very dry monotonous and boring to for the reader the last comes the impression that you give to the reader through the design in terms of attractiveness and appearance so overall it has to be uh, uncluttered uh, with a good structure and a design and a layout the page layout that we use has to be a uh, very good in the in this aspect so these these are the design elements that should be you should be following when you write report and then comes the third criterion that is the relationship criterion and uh, this tells us how we establish a connect or rapport with the readers through this report and there are two uh, important factors when it comes to relationship and the, the first is uh, as to who it is from uh, it it has everything to do with the brand image that you are projecting through the report for instance if you are using protocols for all the uh, earlier design elements like color font size design you get a standard or a unique brand in the form of your report un reports always follow that and that is why you feel like Good, at least browsing or leafing through the reports so that is the relationship and the second one is the audience fit how well the report fits to the purpose of the audience the level of conceptual clarity for the audience is uh, have you uh, if you have presented the concepts in a very um, complex manner it, it will not fit with the audience purpose for the experts you need to present concepts and uh, statements in a particular manner and for non experts you need to be very very simple and you need to explain many things and you need to avoid jargon so these are some of the general things when it comes to relationship criteria last comes the content criterion because the report is all about content the earlier criteria that i have already mentioned are actually adding value to it but the main thing is content what you are conveying to the audience or the reader 
so the organization of content is very very important and of 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 that the first important aspect is relevance how relevant is the content that you are presenting before the audience and uh, we can imagine uh, a micro level and a macro level if you are to, if you are uh, communicating to a an international fund um, provider for instance your mi micro level information like uh, the, the the fine details of a, an event like who in a, who offered welcome address who uh, delivered the keynote those things becomes less important and more important is what uh, what was the event what were its objectives and what was the major uh, things that trans, that happened and what was the final result or outcome of that event so you need to think about this when you write a report whereas if you are uh, reporting to your immediate uh, authority you need to be a little more detail about the micro details so keep in mind this uh, particular aspect about micro and macro level differences and the subject is what the communication is about and we always use different sections and we use titles for that subtitle so all the titles subtitles and the sections need to be linked there has to be a connection between all these things and the common thread should be the subject that you are conveying and uh, finally comes the action what action you are intending to be conveyed through the report or what action you are expecting to be done once you communicate this report the way you project your challenges risks and suggestions are very very important so i am coming to the last slide In summarizing everything what i have mentioned through the previous slides so a good report is a very clear document with relevant content in a simple language and uh, coming to the four criteria we can say that language should be one that directly connects with the audience and the design should be one that is attractive and let readers go for it and the content should be one that is relevant and less confusing and the report should be one that establishes a relationship with the reader so that so we come to the end i wish a very happy documentation to all of you thank you and now i am here to answer any questions that you might have i've uh, got my first question from vishant narayan he says that uh, uh, the documentation has been ex uh, explained in detail and uh, he has got a doubt that while preparing a report uh what all should be looked into uh do we have a standard font and font size to select while preparing a document report that is why that's what i said during the presentation normally uh organizations when they ask their field level officers to present their report they mention a standard or a default font font that happens to be times new roman or arial these are the standard fonts and the font size happens to be 12 and uh, they also mention the spacing that has to be given between lines that is with 1.5 for the uh, main body that i mentioned in the earlier and the second question uh, that has come is from veena v please explain about minutes of meeting also especially the tense thank you for for veena for asking this question because uh, uh, as i said documentation is a general thing it's an umbrella term and it 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 it, it has di got different forms like you have the even reporting you have the meeting reporting so that is a totally different thing as as such so uh, i may need to mention many things while when talking about minutes of meeting uh, maybe i'll i'll uh, deal with uh, the, this along with others in another uh, session but then since you have asked something specifically about the tense uh, you 
definitely should be should not be using a present tense you should be using a reported speech or you should be stating uh, whatever has transpired transpired in the meeting without referring to any names that is a general format for minutes of meeting i hope that is clear veena and uh, nishan has uh, asked again another question so i'll go to grishma lada because uh, i'll come to nishan again grishma lada has asked a question like uh, while preparing a report on an event which is preferable to add photos of event within document or to be attached with the mail not sure very clear with this question but uh, again thanks for asking this question because i uh, skipped one very important aspect during my presentation that is about using photos so in, in while use while use a text layout in the word permits you to embed your photos within the text in a flowing format and when you select that uh, that particular format you can drag your photos to any place and place your photo within the text or you can embed the photo in the text and that is how you read uh, textbooks textbooks uh, in textbooks you don't find photos kept separately uh, with the text you find a text integrated uh, image integrated with the text and uh, so you it will always be better to use the uh, photo along with text and send it rather than send it separately with a with a mail because there is every chance of misplacing the photo or wrongly adding a photo again coming to photo often uh, people tend to use very large size photos and they use a uh, large fonts with double spacing so what happens is the text becomes very less and your photos occupies a lot of space that doesn't convey much much information so you need to be very careful about that that as well let me now go to the next question would it be possible uh, it is uh, jagran sir one minute uh, if you will be if, if you can just uh, you know uh, turn off the share screen people can see you in full full screen okay okay thank you i am stopping share uh, am i uh, am i clear clear now okay okay so sorry for that because i forgot to stop share screen now i i was uh, answering to a question from bhavya das who asked uh, if it is possible for you for me to send the write ups online so uh, bhava das so bhava das uh, i i i am sharing this powerpoint to you online and if you want the text of what i have uh, presented i am very happy to send that word document to you definitely i will i will also think about sharing this with everyone so dr jinesh matthew has asked as to whether it is possible to distinguish distinguish bet between business report journal article and patent document see uh, at the outset let me tell you that a patent document is a very technical document with lot of scientific information going into that with a very specific format because um, the patent applications Uh, or patent documents has to be written in a very specific format, so you cannot uh, deviate much from that. Uh, but when it comes to business documents, business reports, uh, their 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 more importance is given to your charts, your analysis, and all those things. So text may not be that important when it comes to a business report. Uh, that is the difference between business report and official reports that's what i think so hope that is uh, informative for you and uh, harsh thank you for uh, posing a question harsh has uh, uh, told me that he doesn't have a question but he has got some additional uh, suggestions 
uh, he has uh, he is supplementing to whatever i have i have said i'll read it for you like uh, spelling uh, utmost care should be given for spellings while preparing reports uh, thank you hosh for mentioning this because this is very very important especially when you are mentioning names when you are uh, mentioning uh, uh, names of organizations the way you spell that it's very very important because the reader if it happens to be the person who is a head of that organization or the reader happens to be the person who has inaugurated a even and he is reading a uh, name spelt in a very wrong way that gives a very very bad image about that reader and uh, also harsh has written that it is important that we use a consistency in the font name font size bullet and text size very very important it's always better that is where the the copy copyright rules or the style style uh, regulations there are some style books the apa style format for instance is one example there are style formats given by book publishing companies which you can follow or you can e even if you are a large organization you can form your own style format like harsh, harsh has rightly mentioned you specify as to what font size the main title should be what font size the subtitle should be what should be the spacing between the heading and the font size uh, so if you if you follow a standard format your text looks very very neat and it is uh, the readability becomes more and uh, cross referencing is also very important you how you reference especially when you are referring an annexure with the content given towards the end of the document or somewhere inside the document thank you harsh for all your inputs yeah okay thank you anyway i will be sharing all the presentation and also the text what i have prepared and i'll also take this questions down and i'll answer it through email